Ever since the bandsaw sled I made a few months ago, I've been excited about getting a second idea that was supposed to go with that first sled. I mean, look at the prototype and you can tell there was much more involved than just cutting round objects. I have a big project coming up where I need precise holes in the sides of dowels and today I'm going to show you my drilling rig like no other that will allow you to drill perfect holes in wooden dowels and metal tubing. Okay, just like the first sled, we're going to be making a V-block. V-blocks are great for round objects as it gives us a couple points of contact. In the other video, having two points of contact was great as a safety concern, allowing us to easily control cylindrical shapes. With our drilling sled, we want to have that same kind of control with dowels, but this time we'll want it more for precision. Now that I've cut my first V-rest, I'll cut out a second one tracing around the first. To make the V-sled, we'll simply cut a couple boards and butt them up against each other. You don't even need to clamp it so long as it's square in the V-rest. While that's drying, I'm going to cut a triangle that will fit inside the sled. I used a little carpet tape here to attach the triangle. and headed to the bandsaw to get a nice straight cut. If you take this approach, make sure you check that your blade is at a 90 with your table. After I made my points of reference, I found the center of the triangle and brought it to my drill press, where I drilled out a 5 8 inch hole that's the same size as the spacer I'll be adding. Now I'll cut the bottom half of the triangle off so that I'm left with this. I added my glue and centered the drill bit to the center of the cradle. It's also important that we check to make sure it's square. This works surprisingly well and is an extremely simple way to drill a hole through the center of a dowel. I mean, it's pretty much idiot proof, although I will suggest using a brad point bit for wood and taking your time with metal tubing and not forcing the bit through. But as easy as this is to get a nice centered hole, it's useless if I'm looking to add a row of holes. This second prototype will work for making single holes like the first, but it will allow us to make holes that are parallel to each other. We'll start off by gluing two pieces of 1x4s together with a very basic butt joint. I know this isn't conventional, but you might be surprised by how easy it is to glue a couple boards together at a 90 degree angle with a couple squares. When all was dry, I cut the V-sled so that it was the same width on both sides. Now we're going to cut grooves that will run tracks in that will allow the sled to slide. I cut in about a half inch, but a 3 8 inch might have been better. We'll want to make this twice as thick as our blade to give it more strength. Roughly 3 16 of an inch altogether. transfer the thickness over to my thin strip jig, removing about a sixteenth of an inch. If you don't have a thin strip jig, do yourself a favor and get one. I have a link to mine in the description below. 
After I cut both strips off, I tried them out and they were perfect. A good thin strip jig will give you a perfect cut the first time. Next, I sectioned my V-slit I glued earlier into two 4 inch sections and a 1 inch section. You'll see a few clips here of the 1 inch section, but I ended up not using it, so don't get attached to it. Now, we'll glue the tracks into one of the sections of the V-slit. Again, that 1 inch section was an idea that quickly became obsolete. Here I added the clamps. They weren't absolutely necessary, but I wanted to make sure that they were in against the first section. I'm not going to bore you with drawing and cutting out these V-Rests. They're the same as the first ones we made earlier. The only difference is lining them up at the end of the sled and drawing notches out for the tracks, which I cleaned up on the bandsaw. Now we'll add the V-Rests to the bottom slide lining up the tracks. The cutting guides are going to be done a little differently in this version to get away from the drill press. I realize some people don't have the luxury of having a big machine to bore holes, so we'll look to the table saw instead. We'll notch out the center with a crosscut sled. The spacer just barely fit inside the center. Now we'll find the center of the spacer and line it back up against our V-sled, adding pencil lines and a rounded center. The bandsaw will quickly finish it before we add some epoxy. We'll add glue and we're done. With twin beds and twin cutting guides, I can easily add as many horizontal holes that are 100% parallel with each other by making my first hole and using a peg to lock it in place. Now I can measure and put holes in whatever increments that I decide. Here I place them about three and a half inches apart. As happy as I am with this, things can only get better. I'll be the first to admit this was probably a little overdone, but there are some improvements that you can easily add to your jig that are worth noting here. Because we've already built two sleds, I put the full build of this advanced version on my second channel. First and foremost, I went with hardwood. Pine's good for building houses and prototypes, but pine doesn't last very long in my shop. Using hardwood has an appeal to fine woodworking and makes my projects feel like I'm crafting masterpieces. Of course, hardwood is stronger and easily takes more abuse. Adding a measuring tape to the strip is easily my favorite and makes the abysmal act of trying to measure by finding the center of each hole extinct. I can't tell you how many times I've had to go after those holes and found out I was just slightly off. I made the bottoms of each sled flat. This seems like an odd addition, but I got tired of trying to hold onto tubing while trying to use my hand drill. Making clamping possible helped me with the initial drilling and greatly helped drill at angles, which is something I've also been working on in the future. Lastly, with this, I added small walls around the spacer that allows me to remove each spacer and use different sizes. This step isn't exactly necessary as I still prefer using center finding drill bits to enlarge the holes to the sizes I need, but it could be useful. 
Just a real quick heads up, the full build of this advanced drill sled has a sneak peek into this channel's next video that should be released in a couple of weeks. If you're interested in why I needed this sled for that project and how I used the prototype sled to make the next video, give it a watch. Or maybe that was confusing, but it won't be as confusing if you give it a watch. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell, and I thank you so much for being a part of my shop. Please leave a comment below, come find me on Instagram at MakeThingsWithRob, and remember to keep making things.